So what I want to do now is look at why we're discussing resonance and, and, and specifically I'm going to look at a problem that we have with our line structures. Uh, and to do this, I'm going to start off by looking at a molecule of benzene. And we've looked at what benzene looks like. And I drew this out for you, and we've learned how to, um, to name it. And um, although we're not doing any reactions on benzene, something we just need to consider is one of the things I said to you is that benzene is not cyclohexatriene. It, it, it looks like it when we've drawn this out, but it's not cyclohexatriene. Um, and that's one of the first problems is with the way that we've drawn this out. Because when I look at this and when you look at it, you see a six-membered ring with alternating double and single bonds. Now, if this structure, the way that we've drawn it out over here, was 100% correct, what we'd expect to see is that this bond or these two atoms between the double bond would actually be closer to each other because double bonds are shorter than single bonds. So these two would be closer to each other, but the single bonds would be further away from each other. And that's not what we see. Uh, when we look at structures of benzene, and we can do this through crystal structure uh, analysis, so we can actually see exactly where these atoms are. We know that the distance between these two carbon atoms and the distance between these two carbon atoms and all of them is absolutely identical. Now we can use resonance to, to, to show something which is uh, quite interesting. And remember, resonance is just movement of pi bonds or, or, or lone pairs of electrons, no breaking of sigma bonds. And, and we can do it with the benzene ring because we've got this pi bond over here, so we, we can move it. And um, if we take this and we move it in to form a, new, a double bond over there, obviously we've got a problem here, but just bear with me. As we move in, we're going to have too many bonds, so this pi bond is going to have to shift over as well because Otherwise, we've got to break a, a sigma bond. We can't do that. So we can shift the electrons in there because this one can break. And so we can shift these electrons out onto here to make a double bond. But then we have a problem over here. So we're going to shift this one across as well. And, and the net effect of this resonance that I've shown would give you a benzene molecule that looks like this. Now, what we've drawn over there, you might argue, but... Actually, you've just drawn the same thing. It's just slightly rotated. That's true um, in the way that I've done this. But if I change things a little bit and I say I'm going to just put a methyl group over there and another methyl group over there, and now I put the methyl group here in the same place, we can see that in this structure that I drew, there's a double bond between the two methyl groups, and over here it's a single bond. And we can get back there again because we can move these pi bonds all over again like that. Now, you might be saying to me, well, what's the point? Why am I just moving those electrons around? And this is the really important point here. Resonance overcomes a very real problem that we have with our line structures. When I draw benzene and it looks, and I draw it out like this, there's a big problem with the way that I've drawn this. Because this does not represent the reality. It is effectively lies to children. It is a simplified structure which makes it look like hex, uh, cyclohexatriene. But it's not cyclohexatriene. It is actually benzene. And what the resonance, by understanding resonance and what can happen, we realize that it's not these two extremes. The molecule of benzene is not one moment looking like this and another moment looking like that. It is actually an intermediate between the two. And that is what resonance is showing us. What it really is, it's kind of like there's these partial double bonds spread out over the entire molecule. An old way of drawing benzene is actually this over here. Um, it would have either had do uh, dotted bonds like this or sometimes it was actually written with a circle um, like that. And in modern days, we've actually avoided using this, and it turns out that when we do reactions, it, it's much easier to kind of think of benzene like this. And that, that's why we tend to draw our aromatic systems and benzene molecules with these alternating double and single bonds. But the reason we do this 
is because we understand that those double bonds can move around through the principle of resonance and, and give us this other form. And that when we look at that, we're not actually, this is not real. What is real is this type of situation over here where the double bonds are spread over the entire molecule. This actually kind of gives a bit of a hint as to why benzene is so important. Uh, it really is because benzene is very different. Um, note, I want to do another quick thought experiment and then just uh, uh, go back to the acetate anion. If I take butadiene, okay, and I do the same thing, I'm actually doing something quite incorrect. If I decide to move the double bond in like this and then move it out like that over there and draw out that resonance intermediate, it would look something like this. I've taken electrons away from this carbon and I put the electrons on this carbon over here. I, I want to stress that what we've done over there is a very, very naughty thing. All right. Bonds are not just going to randomly move. This might be a nice little thought experiment in terms of practicing how electrons might move because we aren't breaking sigma bonds and we're moving pi bonds and we're getting lone pairs over here and an empty orbital. It might be a nice thought experiment, but this will not happen because there is no incentive for this to happen. Electrons are not just going to randomly decide to move somewhere without there being some kind of effect. Right, and that's an important principle in chemistry. Nothing is going to happen unless there is some kind of effect that is occurring. <clears throat> I just want to go from here and show us the acetate anion. So we looked at this as our example of, um, of, of delocalization or resonance. We used this in the last lecture. So again, what I want to stress here is that in this molecule over here, the way it is drawn in the skeletal structure, it is a lie. This is not what the molecule looks like in reality. It's helpful for us to be able to draw things out like this because it's neat and it's tidy. But resonance helps us understand that both of these oxygen atoms are different. The way it's drawn over here makes it look like this oxygen has a negative charge on it and this one is neutral. But that's not true. If we had to look at this molecule in a crystal structure, we would see something that would look like this over here. And what we would see is that this carbon atom over here would have a slight positive charge on it, if we did the calculations, not the crystal structure, and that this oxygen and this oxygen would be identical to each other. We could not tell them apart. This oxygen would have a partial negative charge on it, and this oxygen would have a partial negative charge on it. That, that's weird, because when we look at things like this, we want to see things as a discrete intermediate. We, we can see those electrons over there, and, and this oxygen effectively has one extra electron. That means it's minus. And looking at two atoms having a charge of minus a half and minus a half feels very weird to us. Because what is half an electron? You can't get that. Now, to fully understand this, we need to go to things like quantum mechanics. There's much more to the story. There's a lot in molecular orbital theory. We, we need to go and look at things like that. And then it becomes more clear. So this is very difficult to, to fully understand. But what resonance does is resonance helps us take this picture over here and upgrade it slightly in order for us to understand why the charge actually is spread out over two atoms. And so what we do is we draw out that resonance form, which shows us how this charge ends up on the other oxygen atom. But here's the most important thing. And it's so, so critical for us to understand this and to appreciate this. When we use this term resonance, there is this kind of feeling that the negative charge is bouncing between the two atoms. 
It is not. Resonance helps us understand that both of these pictures over here are wrong. And the true picture is a blend between these two. It's more difficult to draw that blend out. This is a simple one. It's not as difficult. So sometimes what happens is it gets drawn out like this. There's a kind of like a partial and there's the negative charge gets put somewhere in the middle like that. That's a, a way that sometimes people will draw it out. But in more complicated systems, it can be really difficult to draw out a true reflection of where that charge is on the molecule. And so when we are reading our structures, we really and truly need to understand that when a charge can delocalize and end up somewhere else, that the real structure is not just this or this. These two are both wrong. It is an in-between. And when we draw out resonance helps us to show what those extremes are and for us to understand what the in-between is. So in this case, there are two resonance forms. It means the negative charge sits on this oxygen and this oxygen. So effectively, what it means is that there's a half a negative charge on one oxygen and half a negative charge on the other oxygen. If the negative charge could move on to a third place, then the negative charge would be one third, one third, one third on all of those three places, uh, just in a, a simplistic sense. So the important principle here, and what I really, really want you to, uh, to appreciate, is that resonance helps us give a better picture of what a molecule is, because this is wrong over here. Benzene, when we look at it like this, is wrong. And yet we do draw these out. We will use them. We draw our molecules like this, we draw our molecules like this, but we need to understand that it's wrong. It's not the complete picture. Because that is going to help us understand reactivity later on when things do move around. And so we do need to have that uh, appreciation. So in the next lecture, we're going to be looking at the consequences of resonance, which will actually maybe put this into more uh, perspective. But I need you to appreciate just how wrong these structures are, but that it's okay um, in the end.